Today I'm going to give you a full overview of the layout Waterbox use on all of their sumps. My tank is the Waterbox Frag 55.2, but Waterbox use the exact same layout for almost all of their most popular tanks. There are a couple of exceptions on some of their more niche tanks, which I'll tell you about at the end of the video, and I've made a few modifications to my sump, which I'll cover in another video. And if you're new here and want a weekly dose of reefing goodness, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out when I upload. Onto the sump then, and the water enters the sump at the back of the filter sock section on the left hand side. There are two pipes that bring water down from the display tank, the one on the right is the main drain that will flow all the time, and the one on the left is the emergency drain that should only flow if the main drain clogs. You can control the flow from the main drain by opening or closing a gate valve, which I'm pleased to report is very precise and super easy to adjust and it means you can get the tank running nice and quiet without any real bother. When water enters the sump, it's directed through the filter sock section on the left of the sump. The socks run one after the other, and water can't escape anywhere else, so all of your water will pass through your filter socks. The filter socks themselves aren't in this shot because I personally don't like filter socks, and I've actually installed an automatic filter roller instead, which is a much better solution in my opinion. Once the water has gone through the filter socks, it exits at the bottom of the front of the filter sock section, then goes into the generously sized skimmer section. Now obviously I don't have a skimmer in here, but the section is a decent size, and if the skimmer you're thinking of doesn't fit, it's probably too big for the tank in any event. I could easily fit a Deltec 600 or a NIOS Quantum 120 in here, and still have space for a couple of small reactors behind it for things like Roafoss and activated carbon. After the skimmer section, water flows through a rigid white mesh which will catch any larger particles that have escaped before the water then goes into the return pump section. Because I don't run a skimmer, I don't get micro bubbles in my tank, so I can't tell you if the white mesh will stop them, although most bubble traps are much finer foam, so it may not do the job. The return section is again a decent size, and I have an 8000 litre per hour pump in here, with room to spare for a large bag of Ciparax Media 2. And most people would probably have nothing larger than a 4000 litre per hour pump, so there really is loads of space. For what it's worth, I run this large pump at almost its lowest setting, so I still get good turnover through the sump, but the pump also runs very quietly. The last section to mention is the freshwater reservoir, which sits at the front corner of the sump. On this tank it holds about 12 litres of water, which at the moment just about lasts me for 7 days, so it is a decent size. The layout is generally good and Waterbox makes good use of the available space, but there are a few things I don't like. Firstly is the filter sock section. It takes up about a quarter of the space in the sump, which I personally think is a waste of space. Filter socks are a pain in the backside to maintain, so I personally don't ever use them. In my opinion, manufacturers should start making the filter sock section easily removable, or offer a dedicated sump set up for automatic filter rollers. I've installed an auto filter roller on my tank, which was a total pain in the behind because of the fixed baffles I had to remove. And if you want a filter sock, you can easily install an aftermarket one anyway, so I'd personally like to see aquarium manufacturers stop including large filter sock sections. The next thing I don't like is the layout of the skimmer section. It's just one big space which makes it really difficult to run an algae refugium, which is a really popular addition to most sumps. And that's not just the case on my 2 foot tank, the 3 and 4 foot water box sumps all have the same layout, just a little bit bigger. It's only on the 5 foot and above tanks that you start getting a dedicated refugium section. That's a real miss for me, particularly on the 3 and 4 foot tanks. So if you do want a refugium, you'll either have to put up with your fuge light spilling everywhere, or DIY your own baffle to split the skimmer section in two yourself. It is doable, but far from ideal. Overall though, it is a decent layout and it makes reasonable use of the available space. The water flows in the order you would want it to, firstly into the socks to remove larger particles, then into the skimmer chamber to pull out everything else, then in theory detritus free into the return pump. The areas I don't like can be fixed, but most people, especially new hobbyists, will probably stick with the sump as it comes, so check out the Red Sea sump to see if that might suit you better. Now at the start of the video I mentioned some of the more niche water box tanks have a different layout to mine. 
the five and six foot water boxes split the skimmer section and refugium into two bits and give a bigger return chamber and a separate larger freshwater reservoir. The Marine X35.1 has no filter socks at all because it's only a small tank, but otherwise it's exactly the same as my sump. The Marine X60.2 has a slightly different layout and only has one filter sock instead of two, but otherwise it's the same as mine. The Huge Reef LX range has the same sump design as mine, but with a removable baffle in the skimmer section that allows you to easily incorporate a refugium, and it has a separate freshwater reservoir instead of the included one in my sump. And the Peninsula range includes the exact same features as mine, i.e. filter socks, a skimmer section, a return pump chamber and a freshwater reservoir, it's just in a slightly different layout. And of course the 5 and 6 foot peninsulas have a dedicated refugium chamber. Now if there's anything I haven't covered or if you want to know more, let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for next week. And until then, happy reefing.